the third uh, presentation is going to be made by Dr. Uh, Dr. Levan Kenar. He's going to talk about the coronavirus and the threat that the other bioweapons present to Islamic world. The floor is yours. You have 15 minutes. Assalamu alaikum. I salute the all the participation with respect. This is not a medical congress. Of course, can you turn the volume up a little bit, please? You know, the coronavirus virus cases are increasing. You know, in every Congress, we talk about coronavirus. So there's an increasing interest in this because almost every issue is somewhat relevant to COVID, ongoing COVID situation. You know, the COVID-19, according to what they put together, you know, it basically broke out at the end of 2019 and it basically covered the whole world. More than 170 countries are affected by it. And looking at the numbers, about there is a, the number of cases is about 72 million and uh, about 600,000 people lost their lives from this. So I'm not going to focus on medical information here. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to touch upon what we can do about that. I'm going to talk about the speculations that are being made on that. You know, this, whether it's a bioweapon or not, we have to discuss this. You know how it came about. There are a lot of speculations on that. Some say bioterrorism, some say the, the scientific explanations are uh, enough. Well, there are different approaches to it, basically. From a scientific perspective, bioweapons, you know, these are microbiological weapons, bacteria, virus. They are, you know, various agents that are used to harm or kill a person or a society. But in the last two decades, genetically mo modified microorganisms should be involved. You know, they take a bacteria and they uh, uh, modify the DNA or RNA of it uh, and make it more fatal or effective or make it more resilient to the drugs that we use. And this is what is being discussed. Didn't we have that before? We had this microbe since 1970s, but you know, all of a sudden, all of these countries in the world are being affected especially in this day and age when we have um, serious measures against such threats, it spread very fast. <clears throat> you know, there are markers in terms of the use of um, bioweapons, you know, the specifics of a certain uh, biological agent, for example, for this COVID-19. It uses an enzyme in the body. And its geographic distribution uh, is another issue. When it broke out in China in January, we thought it would be uh, uh, just uh, isolated in China. It would not come out of China, but it did. And it spread to, to the rest of the world. So. Uh, the contamination is one issue, mortality is another. So if the coronavirus cases, you know, there are um, uh, respiratory uh, issues, which is the most fatal uh, and vital uh, issue for human body. You know, it creates fatality, it kills people. So it uh, has a huge psychological uh, pressure on 
uh, humans. Another issue is the economic situation uh, that could be an attack on a certain region. At the beginning of the pandemic, for example, there was an economic warfare going between China and the United States, the trade wars. So this could be just another means to it. So there's now the COVID cases created a lot of economic gaps and this created a fast spread of it. Well, we hope this is, well, we're going through the last months of it. You know, uh, the vaccines that are being uh, invented, uh, well, we hope they're going to be effective. What did we do on that? As Turkey and the Islamic world, we took various measures. We could have taken better measures, but what I want to underline here is in this geography, in this region, in the Middle East, especially where Turkey is a part, you know, it has always been uh, under a biological, chemical, or possible nuclear risk. So, as Islamic countries and as Republic of Turkey, we should always be aware of that situation and we should uh, take the necessary measures. So, this is what I had to say in sum. Maybe we could expand on that with questions if you have any. It could be in Turkish or English. I'd be happy to answer if you have questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor.